race two for the Gala Performance Toyota MR2 Championship is about to get underway. Cars lined up in the assembly area. Ben Rowe is on pole position. He was third in the championship in 2017. But we're going to have a quick chat with Chris Valentine, who's actually right at the back of the grid. He is used to racing in Porsches. He raced in Porsche boxes, Porsche 924s. However, with the MR2 being a mid-engine car, rear-wheel drive, similar performance to a Porsche. Chris, you're used to Porsches. Um, how does this compare? Uh, yeah, you'd imagine it would be similar layout to the Boxster and it would behave similarly. I find it a little bit easier to drive than the Boxster, which I can never really cope with on the limit, but uh, time will tell. I'm still getting used to the car, to be honest. Yeah, it's uh, your first year out. You had a couple of races last year. Um, where can you see yourself as sticking out? Um, well, according to uh, sometimes I've posted in the past, I should be around 10th, but I, <laughs> I've not managed anything near that so far this year. All right, well, uh, good luck on the, this first race for you. Thank you. So with that, I'll hand you up to our race commentator, Andy McEwen, for race two. Thanks, Anthony. So Group C and A next up, so we'll see a few familiar names here. Ben Rowe and McNichols, though, it's their first race of the day. Chris Thomas and Matt Rowe, they were out earlier on. Then it's Josh Brooks and Robert Wells with Will Powell and Shane Mandarin. Peter Higton and David Sheed round out the top ten. Keep an eye on Adam Lockwood from 11th on the grid. He should make some decent progress from there. Another full grid, 27 cars, right the way down to Stuart Briley, who was a retirement in the first race of the day. So, as I said, three groups of cars, groups A, B and C, each group races each other and each group has two races in the day. So this is the second race for Group C, the first for Group A, and the lights are out and we are away. So Maxine Nichols, we're on board with again for this one. It is her second and final race of the weekend. She's once more embroiled in the midfield battles as they head towards Paddock Hill Bend. It's the black car of Ben Rowe third in the championship last year that leads the way out to Paddock Hill Bend. He's a bit slow on the exit and so Mick Nichols almost gets back up the inside in towards the right hander of Druids. Can't quite do it there. There's a bit of a squeeze going on here though. In the middle there is Robert Wells and that almost got a bit close for Gunford through Druids. On board again with Maxine Nichols. So we've got both the Nichols in uh, the race in this one but Mick Nichols widely regarded as one of the fastest Mark III drivers out there. There's our race one winner Chris Thomas further back in this one, a bit of overtaking because he's from fourth place, but he's got one of his sparring partners from race one right behind him in the shape of Matthew Rowe, sideways there for McNichols, and even more sideways in behind him there is the grey and pink car, that's Josh Brooks, Josh started in fifth place on the grid, he's gained two spots getting to third uh, on the first lap, so good start from him, around the outside there was going car number four, that's Peter Higton, who was trying to make a move stick, but here comes Chris Thomas trying to do the same to Josh Brooks, and he's up the inside of Brooks, well he may have made a good start, but that uh, attempt at a move that he made up at clearways has lost the momentum down the pit straight. It costs him third place, but for how much longer? Because the distinctive grey and pink livery car is back up the inside at Druid, and I think he's about to retake the position, is he? He'll run right out to the edge of the road on the exit, shows uh, Chris Thomas the, uh, the kerb on the outside, and goes back through. So that is a textbook example of how you execute that switchback manoeuvre uh, coming through Paddock Hill Bend. Good stuff that from Josh Brooks and that brings Matthew Rowe back into the equation now as they stream their way through the left-hander at Surtees into the right-hander at McLaren. There's that little kink and then the tight right-hander at Clearways is a possible overtake opportunity but it is tricky to do this is a good view on board with Shane Mansbridge here we're looking forwards and backwards from the number 34 car who started eighth on the grid he is uh, chasing down Matthew Rowe who has reattached the rear bumper but the brake light is still out on that car after his various shenanigans in race one Shane Mansbridge also out in his second race so these are two cars that were part of group C the final race we'll see this weekend will be between groups A and B. So Mansbridge on the attack and trying to defend, but you can see he's up there towards the sharp end of the field, doing a good job as they make their way out of Greville Bend. A few of them taking liberties with track limits there. If you keep doing that, you'll get time penalties. In a 13 minute plus one lap race, you might not think that's enough time to accumulate too many uh, uh, track warnings, limits, uh, track limits warnings even, but uh, it's uh, still possible to see time penalties given out. On board now with Neil Stratton as he turns his way through Surtees, and that's Maxine Nichols in front, almost getting assaulted there by, um, that was Daniel Bryant, I think, wasn't it, going around the outside, and now Neil Stratton is going to try and get his Mark 1 car on the inside, if it's all possible. He can't quite do it, though, as it comes out of clear. And there you can see the difference in horsepower with much newer uh, roadster, and Maxine Nichols just streaking away. 47 there in picture 
is uh, Wayne Lewis, who's also in his second race of the day. We're trying to get past him is Will Powell, who was not out in the first race, so this is his first of two races. Stratton again here in the battle that he's having with Maxine Nichols. A distinctive couple of liveries there, the pink and black of Nichols, the yellow and black in behind. Oh, and trying to find a way through. Board again with Nichols. Right over the curb through the apex of Graham Hill Bend. Wherever you look, there are battles going on, aren't there? Up and down the field. There are 27 cars on the grid and every one of them has got someone to play with, it seems. There's Powell. Very wide line through clearways, that's the wet racing line, but it's definitely not wet today. Ambient temperature well into the mid-20s, maybe even higher. Track temperature will be well above that, therefore, so uh, if anything, the tyres are going to start overheating as the race goes on. That could potentially cause a problem in the, uh, the latter going, even in a short, sharp race such as this. And through Paddock Hill Bend, Peter Higdon there hanging on just about. Is he? Up the inside there was looking Wayne Lewis. I don't think he's quite going to be able to find a way through. Peter Higton, the chairman, 62 years of age, but still very rapid indeed. A brief on board there with Mansbridge again, a bit further back. And then we check in with the fight for third place. So that's the green pink car of Josh Brooks. And then we've got the blue and fluorescent yellow of race one winner, Chris Thomas. And then the red and white there of Matthew Rowe. To hurt still all over the side walls of his tyres after his off earlier on, and then it's Shane Mansbridge. So these are the, the four cars dicing essentially over third place because just up the road from his McNichols, they're sort of still in touch with him, but they're definitely losing touch now with Ben Rowe, the race leader, third in the championship last year. But he's setting off uh, like he really means business and like he really feels that he can go to better and take the championship in 2018 in the Garland Performance Toyota MR2 Championship. Kind of drew it down the hill through the gears. Staying in gear, actually staying in third gear by the looks of it. That was through uh, through Graham Hill Bend. Rear wheel drive cars, these of course, the MR2s, mid engined, great uh, weight distribution across all of the classes, really, particularly those newer uh, Mark III roadsters. It's good to see McNichols up there and Matthew Rowe as well, both inside the, uh, the top five with their roadsters out onto the pit straight. It's all just concertina together. I think they're catching McNichols here, aren't they? So Nichols, Brooks, Thomas and Rowe becoming a quartet fighting for second. If they really start tripping over each other, then it could allow more cars into the mix. The hill and Nichols for the first time feeling the need to defend, feeling the need to really, really defend. But Josh Brooks is not deterred, goes right around the outside. He could risk getting shoved onto the grass there and I think he had to back out of that one. Back on board with Maxi Nichols here, who has slipped down the order somewhat. I'm not convinced all is quite right with that car, but I noticed quite a few Mark 1 cars in front of her now. And there's a spinning car, which she does a very good job of avoiding. So too does Neil Stratton. I didn't quite catch the number of who that was, but that was uh, another Larry moment up at the top of the hill. Uh, Drew, it's, it's surprisingly easy to do that actually because it's an uphill braking zone so you really feel that you can carry a lot of speed in then of course it flattens out as you turn through the corner and start going back downhill again it's easy to lose the rear of the car through there back up towards clearways there we're going to see a change here that's the uh, number 18 car of Sam Harper I thought was about to lose a place to Daniel Bryant but uh, he had the traction on the exit there did the novice to hang on beautifully prepared car though as you can expect from Royal Motorsport. He run several cars within the Garland Performance Toyota MR2 Championship. Back on port then with Maxine. She chases down that little dice going on in front. To the right hand uh, at Druids. That road Motorsport car still hanging on. Oh, but out wide there. That was a mistake for Daniel Bryant and that could have opened the door for Maxine Nichols maybe. Oh, but Maxine herself gets two wheels on the turf coming into uh, Graham Hill Bend. Well, there was, was an opportunity there maybe to gain a place, but uh, very nearly went wrong. She's back up the inside though, down towards 30s. This is a brave move to make and she backs out of it probably sensibly. <laughs> Daniel Bryant is on the limit trying to keep her behind. Very nearly found himself pointing the wrong way, as is the case, in fact, for the number 66 car that they come across uh, all of a sudden right in the middle of the road. That was Aaron Bowman-Smith, who 
<laughs> well, we've seen a bit of that, haven't we, in the first two MR2 races here at Brands Hatch. Cars suddenly appearing, pointing the wrong way in front of big packs of cars. It often causes chaos, but everyone uh, was able to react well enough to that one to avoid any major dramas. On the hill there, Maxine's definitely been in the thick of the action in both races here, hasn't she? And here we've got a great example of a, a Mark III car chasing a Mark I car, chasing a Mark II car, so all three of the varieties of MR2 in this group. And Tangle Bryant is looking by far the most ragged. That was a very, very late uh, bit of breaking into Graham Hill Bend. It costs him momentum down the back straight, and in the slightly underpowered Mark I car, you can't afford to be giving away momentum. One thing he didn't give away, though, was the inside line through Surtees, and Maxine Nichols then gets all over the kerb anyway so the position doesn't change. Right, back towards the sharp end of the field as we now inch towards the end of this race. And Chris Thomas here still chasing after the two cars in front of Josh Brooks and Mick Nichols. Mick Nichols rather holding this group up now, though I think they've definitely caught him. There is the potential for some late race changes here on board with Shane Mansbridge as he turns out of Graham Hill Bend. Down the Cooper straight. Single file really through Surtees, but is anybody going to make a move on the brakes in towards clearways? Let's see. Don't think anyone's really close enough unless the door is left wide open, which it isn't. These are all more than experienced enough in MRT racing to know that you can't go leaving the door open when you're in a close group of what is now five cars like this. But Mick Nichols, for the time being, is fending them all off. Brooks there in third, fourth place for Thomas, fifth place for Rose, sixth place for Mansbridge. Oh, Brooks a bit deep though into Paddock Hill Bend. That could cost him on the exit. Let's see. This car beached in the gravel trap, incidentally. They're just out of shot, but uh, that means there are yellow flags out of Paddock, but not a but Druid, where Chris Thomas had a real dive up the inside, but couldn't make it stick. And as they slow down, we have a red flag. This, I presume, will be as a result of the car that's off in the gravel. Oh, no, and it's uh, it's Robert Wells. So it's one of our top 10 runners who has found his way into the gravel trap at Paddock Hill Bend, and that is the race over. So Ben Rowe wins it comfortably back from Mick Nichols, Josh Brooks, Chris Thomas, Matthew Rowe, and Shane Mansbridge. Then it's David Sheed, Wayne Lewis, Paul, Peter Higdon, excuse me, and Will Powell rounds out the top 10. Then it's Adam Lockwood, Gavin Oldworth, Matthew Allen, David Mustard, and Sam Harper, ahead of Maxine Nichols, Daniel Bryant, Neil Stratton, Aaron Bowen, Roman Smith, despite his spin, and uh, Rowe next in line. Then Chris Valentine, Daniel Farmer, Philip O'Halloran, Mike Nash and Patrick Stoner, whilst Rob Wells and Stuart Briley were the only two non-finishers. Ben, what a race that was. In this heat, to come away with a win, you've got to be happy. Yeah, I was quite aware of the fact that the back tyres were starting to go off a little bit about mid-race. Uh, the speed I could take into uh, particular corners sort of had changed, and uh, the car was telling me just to back it off a little bit, and uh, yeah try and sort of you know stroke it home kind of thing so yeah the, the heat was apparent you look great fun these mr2s what are you like handling around the brands out yeah really good yeah um I mean, they really go around here well um I, I think anything to be quite honest i mean there's guys out here racing austin sevens and you know all the way up to radicals and spires and things like that i think as long as you're sort of pushing it to the grip that you've got uh, then you know it's great fun that's a great start to the season for you well done yes well it's a bit better than donnington because it's not snowing so uh, <laughs> Oh, ideal. Yeah. Congratulations, go and enjoy it. Well done. Thank you very much. Mick, what a race, bringing it home in second place in a Class C. Obviously, it's a slightly lighter, but slightly lower on power. But it's great to see the Mark IIs and the Mark Threes obviously mixing it up. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's it's good racing. I mean, I guess that's what the formulas are designed to do. They're, they're there to be competitive. There's no point in one car running away with it. And uh, I think the championship is, is just about right, really. We've got advantages in perhaps corners, and they've just definitely got it down the straights. Well, it's certainly fantastic to watch, and a first podium of, of the year for you. Yeah, first podium for a long time, frankly. I've, uh, I'm not often up here, so my son, who used to race with me, is having a, a season off normally as the man, Stuart Nichols. He's uh, won the championship last year, so or the year before, I beg your pardon. But, yeah, it's good to be here. Well, well done, go and enjoy it. Thank you very much. Well, Josh, it's your ninth time out racing this uh, Toyota MR2, um, and it's your first podium. How are you feeling? Absolutely over the moon. I mean, yeah, if someone would have said 12 months ago I was stood here on the podium, I'd have said they were mad, but yeah, absolutely over the moon. Car is awesome. You built the car yourself as well, didn't you? Yeah, well, a family built car, yeah, completely from the ground up. Um, yeah, done the whole lot, painted it, everything. Well done. Have you got a big smile on your face? So go and enjoy it. Well done. Yeah. I, I just speechless. I mean, absolutely over the moon with it.